Welcome to the week one go to session. This is the first of four sessions we're going to be holding this month every at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, thank you for the people that are here in attendance. Um, for those watching, thank you for watching. Uh, the, the lectures are always recorded for people who can't attend live. Uh, but make sure that you're either attending or watching the lectures because you'll get information here that will help you succeed. Um, lectures are not optional, they're required. Uh, so let's get moving. First of all, welcome to English Composition. Um, I'm thrilled to have you for the month. Hopefully we're going to have some fun. I know that it's a fast-moving class and that things can get stressful, but you'll see. We'll get through just fine, and I'm excited to work with each and every one of you. Uh, let me, before we start talking about what we're going to work on this month, uh, let's talk about some kind of housekeeping things. No, they can't hear me. Now, I'm still learning this new LMS, Learning Management System, that we've just switched to. So I have heard from some of you that you're having trouble clicking the basic activities like this stuff here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why that's happening. <laughs> so just hang in there. For those of you who are unable to click your complete button, don't worry too much. Um, these ungraded activities, I do not take off points if you don't click the complete button. So don't worry. Okay. I know it can be annoying seeing that thing telling you that something's late or you might panic because you're thinking, well, I tried to click, click complete and I hope I don't get points taken off. Don't worry. That's, that's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and mute everyone. Thank you. Uh, give me two seconds. There we go. That should be better now, I hope. Yeah, if I forget to mute people, yeah, people's own sounds that are coming through can interfere. I hope you heard some of what I said. Um, I was talking about how if you didn't, you were unable to click complete on some of these ungraded activities, don't worry. Um, I don't take off points. And I'm still trying to figure out why that's happening. I'm still learning the new system that we switched to. So don't panic. There are no points taken off. Uh, I understand that you might have been trying to click complete and it's it's not happening. Hopefully I can get it figured out. Probably as soon as I speak to someone uh, tomorrow who knows more than I do. Um, okay. Other things we need to know. Um, if you click on the About tab, which I think from your end is near the top of the page, you'll find the course syllabus. In terms of my office hours, that's under the Meet Your Instructor activity. Um, my hours are late. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm a late mover. <laughs> So my office hours, and I think I can show them real quickly. As you can see, basically I'm in the office Tuesday through Friday, starting at 3 p.m. And I'm usually here until late, until 9 p.m. So if you need to call into the office and actually speak to me using the phone number that's up here, you can typically do so. I mean, listen, sometimes I will get out of here an hour early if it's completely dead and no one's contacting me. But in general, I'm here late. And sometimes I'm even here past these hours. There are times I'm on campus till midnight. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, I'm basically working late just about every day. Um, and after Friday, yeah, I do try to check for messages. I don't completely check out during the weekend, but my times vary because those are technically my days off. Okay. Um, I'm usually pretty quick. We do have a policy where we try to respond to student questions or messages within 24 hours. Usually I'll get back faster than that. You might even get in a message at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, but do understand that, yeah, I sometimes will not see messages until I begin my day at 3 p.m. or so. Okay. Um, let's see. Other important things to mention? I don't think so. I mean, the old days under the old system, um, I don't know. I like the new system. Do, are people adjusting to the new system okay? Is it working pretty well from the student's end? I'm still trying to figure out things on my end. Yeah, it used to be like there were some kind of annoying things for instructors. Like if you if a student left a comment under our activity, and from the student's perspective, it made complete sense, of course. You leave a comment, of course, the instructor is going to see it. But actually, it got buried for us, and we had to go search for comments. And now there's a nice thing in place where both messages and comments uh, stand out to us under our notification system. So that's one thing that I like a lot. Uh, but yeah, bear with me this month, OK? Because I'm learning the new system as well. Uh, so OK, now let's start to, oh, one other important thing to mention. And I forget where it is. <laughs> uh, but it has to do with the late policy. I wonder which activity it's under. 
Actually, let me just go into it this way. Well, I forget. It's under one of these activities. But basically, we have a new late policy. It used to be we accept a no late work in English. Um, so if it wasn't due when it was due, you'd get a zero, which I always thought was a little bit harsh. Uh, but now there's a 10% penalty per day that it's late, up to 30%. So basically, you have three days, 72 hours to hand in work. Um, again, there is a reduction for late work, but at least you don't get a complete zero. Uh, so I think that's, yeah, that's the other important thing I kind of wanted to mention. Okay, let's start talking about this week's, or excuse me, this month's material and this week's material. Here, let me blow this up a little bit. Um, first of all, for those of you who are wondering why you take this class, we have a nice little slide here. Basically, that writing is important. Even if you don't think it is, it is. And for those who say that it isn't, deep down inside, they know that it is. Um, so yeah, uh, you're going to earn your degree here at Full Sail, but obviously you'll go much farther if you're able to communicate clearly, both in speaking and in writing. That's why you take courses in creative presentation. So you got some practice in that class, which I teach as well, by the way, in terms of not just how to create a presentation, but how to plan a speech um, clearly. Um, in this class, we're going to focus on writing skills because they are important, as this little factoid here mentions, that 97% of executives say that strong skills in writing are absolutely essential. Okay? Um, so that's the kind of the point in this class. We don't want anybody to move forward unless they can demonstrate, yeah, pretty solid writing skills. This class is purposely designed to take us through the writing process. Every week is basically devoted to a different part of this little picture here. So this week we're focusing on brainstorming. Okay, We're going to talk about how to gather ideas. And the first major graded activity, which is a worksheet you're going to have to complete, is designed to have you brainstorm ideas. And actually we're going to practice a little bit of brainstorming. Uh, during this session, we're going to take a couple look. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple advertisements. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a second. That the main task this month is to analyze an ad. Um, so we'll get some practice at that, so you can kind of hit the ground running. Um, and then in week two, yeah, we're going to be in this category here: researching, investigating, organizing your material. So the week two assignment is to create an outline, a blueprint of your upcoming essay. Um, and then in week three, we're going to be here. You're going to write a draft of your essay. And then the final week, you're going to participate in peer review. So you'll get to take a look at each other's work and respond to it and revise your essay draft uh, to hand in for the final day of class. But yeah, each week we're taking you through the steps of the writing process. Now, what are we focusing on this month? I just mentioned it. This month's focus is ad analysis. Every one of you is going to choose a specific ad, um, and you're going to write a short paper, uh, two to five pages, actually three to five pages, because uh, it's 700 to 1400 words. So we don't put it in terms of a page count, um, but yeah, that breaks down into about three to five pages, um, where you're going to choose an ad. And let me show you the list of ads, where to find it. Okay, so let me go real quickly back to the FSO platform. I'm still getting used to moving around. <laughs> It's actually better for me to be in this view. You're seeing things from the instructor's viewpoint. But this way I can go in and preview things. And where do we have it? I think it's under here. We've moved things around. No, it's not under there. <laughs> I'll find it. And go ahead and shout out if you remember where the list of ads are. Oh, here, over, assignment overview, the essay, I believe. Okay, so under this activity, okay, assignment overview, the essay, you can find a list of ads. And you have to scroll down to the bottom. And here they are. Okay, so you're going to choose from the ads listed below. You have a whole bunch. Um, some of these are live action television commercials. And a few are print ads. The final three are print ads. Um, so you're going to choose one of these. The Call of Duty one is always popular. But actually, let me give a piece of advice right now. Take a look at all the ads, honestly. You know, watch every single one. Take a look at the print ads. Because I'll encourage you to choose an ad that you feel like you can... Choose an ad that you can immediately spot things. Uh, choose an ad that you feel comfortable writing about. Sometimes, sometimes students will jump at the McDonald's ad or the Call of Duty ad. 
one, because it's at the top of the list, and two, because lots of people love Call of Duty, the video game, and McDonald's as a place to eat. Um, but sometimes they're not sure what to say about those ads. And then I have to be the instructor who says, well, why didn't you choose a different ad? Um, so yeah, you might find that the Altoids ad or the Allstate ad or the Salvation Army ad, you actually have more to say about. And we're going to talk a little bit about what sorts of things you should be looking for. And we'll practice this with a couple sample ads because um, that will help you when it comes to filling out the worksheet and identifying things in these ads. But yeah, you're going to choose one of these ads and you're basically going to be sticking to it all month. Okay. So yeah, from the worksheet that, that is due this Sunday to the outline in week two, to the essay draft in week three, to the revision in week four, it's all going to be based on whichever ad you choose. So choose carefully, okay? You do probably have some wiggle room in the sense that, you know, if you think you're going to write about the Allstate ad right now, sure, of course you can change your mind before Sunday and choose something else. In certain situations, even in week two, if after the worksheet assignment, a student wants to change ads, you shall say, okay. Uh, but yeah, after week two, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit too late to change. So choose carefully. Let me go back to our presentation. And my cursor disappeared. Hold on a second. On your end, you probably see my cursor, but sometimes it disappears on me. There we go. So that's the focus for this month, ad analysis. It's an incredibly straightforward assignment in some ways. I mean, really what your task is, is to choose an ad, watch it with care, or study it with care if it's a print ad. And much like you might lift the hood on an automobile to see how it ticks underneath, how, it, how the mechanics operate, you're doing the same thing with the ad. You're kind of getting underneath the, underneath the hood of the ad to see how it ticks. Okay, to see how it functions. Um, these large companies like Activision or McDonald's or Allstate, they hire ad agencies and pay them a ton of money to create these ads. And no detail in an ad is, acc is accidental. Okay, Again, these ad agencies get paid a lot of money. They're spending millions of dollars to create these ads. So no details there by accident. Um, and essentially, we're asking you to identify or notice these sorts of details. And right now I'll give you a little bit of a, uh, a hint. You have to f find or identify three things, three aspects, three elements, three interesting details, three cool things going on in the ad, because those three things are going to be the analysis points that you're going to focus on in the body of your paper. Okay. Yeah. So we're striving toward ultimately kind of like a five paragraph essay. You'll have an introduction paragraph, you'll have a conclusion paragraph, and in between you'll have three body paragraphs. Each one of those body paragraphs is going to focus on the three aspects of the ad you're going to focus on. Um, and yeah, we're trying to look at the overall question of how do advertisers persuade their audiences? Because that's what ads do, right? They try to get you to purchase their product or use their services. Um, and all ads are trying to have you come away with a better sense of that product or service. So that when you watch the McDonald's ad, for instance, suddenly subconsciously you're hungry for a burger, right? They're trying to grab you. So we're trying to analyze the parts within those ads to determine how do they do that exactly. Um, I've already talked about this, so let me kind of just skim past this, right? We're writing an essay that analyzes an advertisement, and of course, here's the breakdown. I just discussed this, what we're doing week to week. So right now we're here. We're going to brainstorm ideas because you'll need those ideas in place. So I already said you're going to have to identify three aspects, three elements, three cool things that are going on in your chosen ad. I like to think about it as roughly falling into two broad categories. You can focus on formal issues. Another term for this is our technical issues or aspects. So things like sound or music, uh, color, use of color, layout. This is especially maybe appropriate for a print ad. Font, that would that could apply to a commercial or, or a print ad. Uh, camera movement, style, etc. Okay, so technical things. Um, but if you're not so comfortable talking about technical things or you don't want to just focus on the technical aspects of an ad, there are also what are I like to call thematic issues, okay? Issues dealing with theme, character, metaphor, story, character, or cast. So for example, in the McDonald's commercial, which focuses on a young man's first day at work where he's feeling overwhelmed and he's getting a tour 
of his new job, led by a boss who speaks uh, a million miles a second. <laughs> uh, during his tour, he comes across a young woman who's also clearly on her first day on the job. They briefly make eye contact. And at the end of the ad, the young man, when he escapes finally and then finds relief at McDonald's, he sees the young woman again. Now, that's no accident, okay? It's, it's no, uh, yeah, that's planned, okay? That the young man and the young woman make eye contact early in the ad. They see each other again at the end. So why would the ad include that detail? Answering questions like why lead you toward analysis. Or if an ad is making interesting use of color, why is it using that color? Okay. So yeah, analysis means more than just identifying things. Because if you just identify things, then you're just summarizing or pointing out what the reader can plainly see. Uh, but to examine why those things are being used, that leads you toward analysis. Okay. So yeah, the McDonald's example I just gave, yeah, that would be an example of like a character issue. Okay. There's a kind of boy-girl subplot to that ad, and it's not an accident. And exploring why the ad would include that leads you down the road of analysis. If at any point you have questions, feel free to ask in the chat, or if something I'm saying doesn't quite make sense, um, feel free to ask away. We're going to look at some examples now, okay? And I'm going to rely on you guys to, yeah, type away with some answers in the chat. So let's take a look at this ad. This is from Jeep. So let me just ask you, what stands out to you in this ad? And actually, let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit, because as you can see, um, actually, you would only see one side of this ad. Oops, here, let me try to get this. There we go. Uh, I know it's a little bit blurry, but if I zoom in on the tagline, you can see it reads, Jeep, see whatever you want to see. And it's above and below the picture. Again, when you see the ad in, let's say, online or in a magazine, you only see one half, okay? And the trick is, of course, when you look at the ad upside down, looked at one way, it looks like a penguin. Looked at the other way, it's a giraffe's head. You don't see both at the same time, okay? I'm just showing both the upside down and right side up image so you can see how the ad functions. But as you can see, this is a pretty minimalist ad. Very simple. Uh, so it's got a little bit of a trick. It features an animal, a reversible image of an animal. Um, and it's got the Jeep word up here and the tagline, see whatever you see above and below. Notice that it appears upside down because that encourages the person to look at the image upside down and notice that it's got this little visual trick. But what already stands out to you in terms of details? So on the previous slide, we said we can talk about formal elements. We can talk about thematic elements. What are some interesting aspects about this ad? And don't worry right now. You can just toss out whatever ideas come to you. Um, anything that stands out to you in terms of what we could possibly explore. Even if you don't have maybe the bigger picture in place of why those aspects are important, can we identify anything about the ad? I'm going to hang out and wait for someone to type something in the chat. <laughs> uh, what is one element we could focus on in this ad? Any thoughts? Or are people feeling lost, like they don't know what to say about this ad? And think about the list of things we just talked about on the previous slide. Any thoughts? Because things are a little bit silent here. Don't know why that moved. I don't know how to pronounce some of these names here, but Abel, Andre. <laughs> Andre says he has absolutely no idea. Well, how, does it, do other people feel the same? They're looking at this ad saying, well, I don't know what I could say about this. And by the way, it doesn't have to be something deep and secretive. I mean, I've actually already mentioned several things that are possibly interesting about the ad. 
or oh, don't make this too difficult because like I said, this assignment really is very straightforward. If you saw this ad in a magazine, what would stand out as cool? Interesting. Let's begin there. What stands out as interesting, unique? Actually, I have a number of people here. I, I don't know how to pronounce your names. Uh, yeah, I don't know. S-E-M-A-J. I'm not sure. I don't want to embarrass myself by pronouncing something wrong, incorrectly. So Kayla. How many people are hearing me? Let's begin there. <laughs> James backwards. Okay. So is your name James or is it just... Or if you can give me some indication how to pronounce your name. Do I have everybody with me though? Because I hear Andre responding, but no one else. Okay. Well, let's talk about... How about use of color? Okay. For example, uh, there's this kind of mauve, beige, sand-colored color. That's one aspect of the ad. Remember I said that ad analysis means not just pointing things out, but explaining, okay, but why that color? So why might Jeep use this color? Kind of this beige, sandy, dusty. And if we take a close look at it, you can see it's kind of like a, a woven kind of fabric type look, kind of like a burlap sack. I'm going to argue that, yeah, the use of color is an accidental. There's a choice here. Why might this work for the brand Jeep? Any thoughts about that? So here, I've given you an idea. We could focus on the ad's use of color. But why use this color? Why not use red or blue or purple? Uh, Mr. Harris says, seat cover? Okay, I'm, I'm not sure entirely what that means, but I think I, you might be on an interesting pass there. Uh, and I apologize. Uh, the name looks like Doug, but I, it's D-O-U-G-E-R, so if you could help me with the pronunciation, that would be awesome. Andre says, yeah, it looks like dirt. Okay, good. And does that make sense, like why you would pick a very earthy color for Jeep? Let's put two and two together. Why would an earthy color work well for Jeep? And you all know the answer, so just state the obvious. I'm not looking for, again, this is not an assignment where you have to like find symbols. This isn't a poetry class. You don't have to deep, deeply read between the lines. Um, I'm used to seeing Jeeps on the beach. Okay, and Kayla says Jeeps are usually used for off-road, uh, off right? Yes, that's, that's, that's your answer. Think of what Jeep is, right? We usually associate it with off-roading. We think about safaris. We think about um, its, a, its initial purpose was in the military. So, yeah, it's, it's got that. And even though Jeeps come in many forms now, you know, they're giant SUVs and people who drive them are hauling kids. They're not necessarily you know, going off-roading. Still, that's the image of Jeep, right? It's that classic dune buggy type vehicle without a roof, sometimes without doors, stick shift. Again, even though maybe Jeeps nowadays don't have that, still, that's the image of Jeep. Uh, Mr. Harris says, penguins can live anywhere. Jeeps can go anywhere, right? Okay, great. Yes, absolutely. And Andre says, the fact that there are two animals is because it represents two different environments that the Jeep can be used. Uh, or doesn't that, or it doesn't make sense. No, that makes complete sense. Now, do you see what we're getting at? Uh, hopefully, the synapses are firing, because that's what you have to notice about things. Yeah, the color isn't accidental. It's an earthy image, because that's what we associate with Jeep. Right? And even this woven quality that reminds you of a burlap sack or a canvas tent. Maybe that's what Mr. Harris was saying when he said car seat. Or think about it, khaki clothing, right? These kind of desert images or sandy images or off-roading images. Um, so yeah, color is a major aspect here. Um, and someone mentioned, Andre, the two animals. Yeah, again, this ad wouldn't work for Toyota or Lexus. Okay. Yeah. If you, if they did this thing with the reversible image, it would be a cool trick, but it wouldn't really make sense. Like, okay, why is Lexus doing that? Why is Honda doing that? But for Jeep, it absolutely works because as Andre points out, Jeep is the kind of vehicle that sure, maybe in the Serengeti in Africa to visit giraffes, you'd be cruising in a Jeep or penguins are down South in Antarctica or the very tip of South America. 
right? Again, a Jeep is the kind of vehicle that you could imagine heading to those places. And think about how that reinforces Jeep's brand. Even if you're never going to off-road, even if your adventures are just grabbing kids and hauling groceries, still, the name Jeep brings to mind that kind of earthiness. Um, and as you, by the way, now all the great ideas are flowing um, because we could actually find three points to talk here. Use of color, um, the animal imagery, right? Why animal imagery? That's an important detail to focus on, the ad's imagery. And there's plenty to say there about why they're using animal imagery. Um, and I think someone else referred to the tagline, right? That Jeep is the kind of vehicle that allows you to see whatever you want to see. Obviously, it's a kind of a double meaning here because the animal image flip, looked at one way. It's one type of animal flipped upside down. It's another type. So, yeah, the ad itself allows you to see whatever you want to see. But Jeep, the vehicle, allows you to see whatever you want to see. So we already have three points we could talk about here. The ad's use of color, the ad's use of animal imagery, the ad's clever tagline. And by the way, I'm not using it this month, but I actually wrote a sample ad analysis essay on Jeep. So let me see if I can open up that real quickly. And we'll see some parts of this because I do use the thesis from the paper in a later slide. Uh, but yeah, even though it says Jane, a student, <laughs> that's actually me. Um, but as you can see, I kind of crafted an introduction paragraph. By the way, I'm getting way ahead of myself. We're not going to really get into these issues until um, other weeks. Uh, but yeah, I craft an introduction that plays on the idea of Jeep. Jeep, the well-known brand, practically markets itself with its reputation for ruggedness, independence, and adventure. Okay, so a few of you already mentioned that, Kayla and someone else. And then I found a nifty little quote here saying that Jeep is the most copied brand of American vehicles and that that's not surprising because the Jeep spirit is hardwired into our cultural consciousness. One can easily picture someone behind the wheel of a Jeep downshifting around a snaking mountain bend, kicking up dust through the sun-baked uh, sun Australian outback, zooming past zebras grazing the Serengeti. See, I'm kind of playing with that idea of what Jeep calls to mind because I think that's an interesting way to kick off the essay. Um, and I, I describe the ad briefly because your essay is going to be aimed at the general reader. So the general reader might not, yeah, they won't have access to the actual ad. So it's a good idea to give them a gist of what the ad is about. And we're going to come to this a bit later in the session, but I end with my specific thesis, right? Through the use of simple color playful imagery, and a double meaning tagline. So I name my three things that I'm going to focus on in the body of my essay. Uh, the Jeep ad appeals to the inner adventure inside everyone. So you're going to have to do something similar, whether you choose the McDonald's ad or the Call of Duty ad or the Allstate ad or the Altoids Mint ad. So that's why I'm saying try to pick an ad where you can immediately see three sorts of things. Okay. Mr. Harris says you're giving me good hints. Great. And we're going to practice a bit more. Okay. I have another example to look at because I want you guys to feel comfortable. So when you choose your ad, you already know some for things to look for. Um, and we'll come back to this essay later in future weeks. Um, but I devote an entire paragraph to the ad's use of color, another paragraph to its playful imagery. And actually, who was it? I think it was Andre who was doubting himself because he said, does, it, does what I'm saying make sense? That Jeep is the kind of vehicle that you could go see penguins and giraffes? And absolutely not, because look at how I end my paragraph on the ad's imagery. Only such a versatile automobile's Jeep, the ad seems to suggest, could take one on a journey into the heart of the African plain or to the rocky tip of Tierra del Fuego, that's in South America, to see giraffes and penguins up close. So Andre, that's your exact idea. So no, it's not, it makes perfect sense. Cause look, I made the same point in my sample essay. I might send this out to everyone at a certain point because we have, we do have examples of completed assignments, worksheets, outlines, essays, but they're sort of B-ish examples, maybe even B minus-ish examples. Um, so maybe I'll send out the Jeep example in, in future weeks if someone wants to see kind of a model ad analysis paper. Okay, so we found three things to identify here. Let's take a look at another example. Actually, let me blow this up. Um, this is an ad for an MG convertible. Note, this ad is actually 40 years old. 
But I could envision this ad existing today, especially since there are so many retro ads out there. I don't know if people remember there was an ad for uh, Jose Cuervo, which was supposedly set in the 1970s. The idea was that it was the Rolling Stones tour and that we were on their private jet. And so it has a bunch of characters who look like they stepped out of the 1970s and the Rolling Stones music is playing and Jose Cuervo because I guess the band really did use <laughs> a lot of Jose Cuero during that tour. Uh, they kind of remind people of that. I don't know if anybody has ever seen that ad, but it's very, very retro. So even though this isn't an older ad, I could envision it existing today. But what are things that stand out in this ad? And yeah, shout out whatever stands out. And don't worry, there are some things that are, yeah, quite noticeable. And we're adults, so... Okay, yeah, the woman doesn't have a bra. And then, by the way, I'm not trying to make people uncomfortable, but sexuality is a part of this ad, right? And that's no accident. And if we think about the times, this is from uh, the early 1970s, so think about that. We're recently out of that period of the late 60s where things like Bob uh, bra burning and uh, the rise of female rights were at an all-time high. So, yeah, that definitely fits the the time period. But even if it, ex if it existed, say, this ad, it would still function, I think, appropriately. Um, so, okay. the the Im Let's say, just say the image of the woman. Okay. She's front and center. Other aspects of the ad that maybe stand out? The title matches the car, one person says. Uh, what do you mean? Do you mean the tagline of your mother wouldn't like it? Is that what you're referring to when you say the title? I assume so, because the little thing there, it says the advertising archives, that's just a watermark that shows that it came from a website. So yeah, your mother wouldn't like it is the tagline. Okay, why does that match the car? Your mother wouldn't like it. Like, what is this ad trying to tell us through that tagline? Your mother wouldn't like it. What is it saying about the car? And by the way, if you don't want to answer that question, you can still throw out ideas in terms of what three things we could focus on. Certainly the image of the woman could be one of those things. She's standing front and center. She's independent. Uh, okay. The convertible is dangerous. Right. There's an association there, okay, that this is the car, right? It's a little bit dangerous. It's a little bit naughty. Just as your mother might not approve of this woman, <laughs> she wouldn't approve of the car. Uh who do you think this ad is aimed at? What type of consumer? Because the target isn't everyone. Even the Jeep ad, even though it seems like it's targeted at everyone, because after all, anybody can buy a Jeep. Uh, but still, I, I would argue that even with that ad, there is a specific audience in the sense that it's appealing to people who, yeah, the inner adventurer, the person who, for whom the Jeep brand, the Jeep ethos kind of stands out, appeals to someone. How about this ad? Or perhaps the answer is, is obvious, but do we do we know who this ad is aimed at? Um, while I'm waiting for responses to that, I'll say that, okay, we found two things to talk about so far. The image of the woman, the ad's tagline, okay. Um, how about a third thing? Is there a third thing that we could possibly focus on in this ad? Think in terms of either formal qualities. Andre says the guy checking out the car. Okay. Yeah, there, there's there's something there. Uh, yeah, the guy's attention is definitely going toward the woman. Um, I'm trying to think, though, could you build an entire paragraph about the guy staring in her direction? Um, possibly. If you look at, if, if let's say you were to frame it in terms of, there, there's something called the, the female gaze. G-A-Z-E, which simply refers to the ways in which ads and movies and television shows often kind of objectify women, um, or they're used in such a way in which the attention is supposed to go toward them. So I think if you couch it maybe in that larger idea, or you could talk about the environment as a whole. So there's the image of the woman, that could be a point, the ads tagline, discussing how the ad's tagline is playfully using this idea of the car being sexy and dangerous and something that is kind of, 
yeah, outside the typical. Uh, but if we needed a third thing, maybe the environment in general. So that would allow you to, to include discussing the guy here and how his attention is drawn toward either the woman, the car, or both. By the way here, you can barely tell, but this poster here, she's standing outside in the theater. You can see that says Marlon Brando. I don't know how many people still recognize that name. And the title of the poster is cut off, but I know what this poster is. Uh, it's for the film Last Tango in Paris. And if you don't know that film, uh, you said that? Did I miss that earlier? Uh, if you don't know the film Last Tango in Paris, a quick trip to Wikipedia, which, by the way, is not an appropriate source for research. <laughs> I should say that now. But sure, if you need basic info on what that movie was, even that's no accident. Okay, Last Tango in Paris was a controversial film that came out at the time. A very, very sexual film. Also a highly regarded film. It was nominated for Academy Awards. It's considered a masterpiece. But yes, it's a very, very sexual film. So even the poster in the background is no accident. Okay, all these things are working together. Um, the ads use the color. Okay, the car is red. Red stands out, but red is also a sexualized color. Uh, the use of color as a whole. Okay, we can't quite tell what time of day it is, but it seems like it's early evening or dusk. Okay, it's it's getting to be that time of night where uh, I don't know appropriate people would be at home or having dinner, but here's a woman out by herself, and here's a single lone standing man looking in her direction, and here's a <laughs> a highly highly controversial sexual film that she's standing in front of. So the more we examine this ad. Uh, the more we can notice. Okay. So yeah, uh, the woman, the tagline, the, the ad's use of color, maybe all the small details that make up the setting or the environment. You have uh, plenty enough to talk about to discuss this ad. And let's say right now you're thinking, well, gosh, I couldn't find three things in this ad. It sounds okay now, but I didn't notice this poster. Or I don't know what to say about color. Then choose an ad where you can find three things to say. Okay, that's why I said the most important thing for you to choose is an ad you feel comfortable with, because um, that's going to lead to success. Okay, we're going to skip this because we already talked about this. Okay, obviously the car is the product, but it's selling much more. It's selling an idea. It's playing on ideas of sexuality. Um, let's take a look at this ad. I'm going to go ahead and. Type it into uh, type it into your chat window. It's 15 seconds, okay, and it's going to take you to YouTube. So if you could click on that URL and watch the 15 second ad, and then come back and mention things that you think are noticeable about it, so we can talk about it, okay? And let me know when you're finished watching it. That includes people who are watching this after the fact at home. Watch this video. You'll have to actually type it in, uh, but you can do so pretty quickly, I think. Actually, for people who are watching, they won't be able to hear the sound, unfortunately. But Okay, so that's for the people watching at home. Yeah, very short, 15 seconds. Uh, but what can we say about that? Uh, the people watching at home, you'll have to watch it through YouTube. You can even type in Diet Coke, Tall, Dark, and Ansem to get the video really quickly. Uh, but uh, things that are noticeable about this ad that stand out, go ahead and type away in the chat. Kayla says, made me thirsty. Okay, but analysis means identifying why. Okay, why is this ad successful? And I would say it's doing more than just making you thirsty. Yes, ultimately, of course, it's doing that. But it's also doing very, very specific things. It's not just your typical soda ad. It's also playing with ideas, themes. Um, and if you're not sure, at, at the very least, just again, what are three things that are going on in this ad? Three cool things or three things that stood out to you, even if you're not sure what it means. That's what we can work on next. 
But any thoughts? Uh, funny how the can is on the word okay. Oh, wow, nice. I didn't even see that's something I've watched this a million times and I've I haven't noticed that. Um, okay, well, they see the word okay. <laughs> that is an interesting detail, and that's an amazing detail to point out. Um, and yeah, you're right, I don't think that's by accident. It you have the name of the word coke here, and then you have okay right to reinforce that sense that yeah it's an okay brand to drink um i mean my only concern is yeah maybe you could write a paragraph about that i'm i'm a little bit concerned i'm not sure if it's the richest detail in the world to point out especially when i th there are other aspects but but certainly if if you feel like you could write a rich paragraph about that that's certainly something you could point out how about other things Did everybody watch the ad? Or are people confused about what to focus on? Again, I, I we're doing this so that when you choose your ad, hopefully you'll you'll be able to spot things quickly. <laughs> no ideas. Or do we not have ideas because we're at a loss to what to say about the Diet Coke commercial? Okay, good. Someone says the music. Right, the music definitely stands out. For one, because there is no other sound in this ad. There's no voiceover. There's no person holding the drink and saying something. Uh, there's the use of music. And how do we describe that music? And let's be honest, just use common sense. You've heard this kind of music before. It's definitely, it's having fun with the viewer, okay? It's definitely, uh, well, I don't want to give you the answers, but yes, that, that kind of music, how do we describe it? Or how is the Coca-Cola glass being portrayed? Because it's, if you, if, you, if you don't see the, I think, obvious connection, and it will be obvious as soon as we point it out. Okay, someone describes it as funky. Why would funky work for this ad? I would say, yeah, it's funky, but it's also, I don't know if people still remember these names, but the R&B singer, Barry White, or I don't even know if I want to go there, but <laughs> let's stay with Barry White. It's not just funky music, but it's kind of sexualized music, right? I mean, it's, it's music that we associate with... Uh, yeah, sexy songs, sexy music. Kayla points out tall, dark, and handsome. Right, so okay, that's also, yeah, the tagline is not accidental, right? We think of people as being tall, dark, and handsome. But here it's not a person, it's the Coke ad. So yeah, the Coca-Cola ad, like the car ad, but in a much different way, is playing with ideas of, again, kind of like sexual imagery. But in the car ad, it's kind of, yeah, this idea of dangerous or naughty, your mother wouldn't like it. But in the Coke ad, it's being played for laughs, okay? The funky music that we associate again with sexy songs or sexy movies. Um, and I'm going to click on the ad one more time. But notice even the camera movement. Okay, this movement from bottom to top. It's sort of mimicking the kind of way that a camera might scan the human body from bottom to top, right? Haven't you ever seen movies that focus maybe intensely on a, on, a, on a woman's legs, right? And it starts at the ankle and starts crawling its way up. But here it's a long slender glass instead of an actual human body. Um, and yeah, sure, even the, the, the shape of the glass, okay? So none of these details are accidental. So we could certainly talk about the ad's use of sound. That's a big one, okay? Why this music? Remember, no details accidental on ad. So, and we always try to answer the question why. So if the music is funky, why are they using that music? 
or as Kayla said, the tagline, tall, dark, and handsome. Why that name for this, for this ad? Um, the camera movement, again, kind of seductive and slow, right? Revealing the slender glass little by little. Okay, it's all kind of working together to kind of produce an image. Just as the Jeep image is working to reinforce a singular image of the Jeep as an earthy off-roading vehicle, here it's kind of being played for laughs in terms of it's playing with kind of sexual music, sexual camera movement, uh, but it's doing so for a Diet Coke glass and bottle. Does that make sense when I explain it? Are people sitting there saying, okay, yeah, that makes no sense now, even though maybe I didn't see it or hear it at first? Because that's what that's something I want to make sure people are kind of getting. So you could say yes, no, <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> because you're going to have to do this with the worksheet. Okay. Uh, and actually, let me show you the worksheet real quickly. I think I, do I have it open? That's a Jeep ad. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Kayla says it makes sense. Okay, good. And by the way, that's why I say look through every ad choice that you have available and make sure that you choose one that you are comfortable with. Uh, so let me go into the activity for this week. Okay. So it's here under step one, preparing to write. That's the first major activity. You can see it's worth 10% of your grade. I want to have some time to talk about the McGraw-Hill activities. So let me kind of zoom through this. But yeah, you can read through the instructions. And here's the worksheet, okay? This is what you're being graded on. You have a sample. Where is it? It's here somewhere. Here, this little step one thingy, if you click on it, you'll get to see a sample worksheet. Again, as it says here, that the example meets all basic requirements, but it is average work and not perfect. Okay, actually, let me just go ahead and open that one. And this is based on the Diet Coke ad. Okay, so here's the worksheet. There's some basic questions, the title of the ad, what company, ask you to describe the ad, but not just describe it, but to be sure that you're pointing out those important details that you're noticing. Um, okay. And again, this is average work. This is probably a B-ish, maybe a low B-ish example. It's not based on how much you write. It's based on the quality that you write. But often, yeah, the, the ones that get top-notch grades, it's not that you have to fill up a lot of space. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing someone just fill up the space fill up space endlessly uh, but they, they tend to have just to say more sometimes okay um, perhaps most important is you have question nine here which asks you to create a thesis we're going to talk about thesis in just two seconds um, and you have some examples actually the examples that are in your worksheet are a little bit different than this one you have the jeep thesis and you have uh, a Diet Coke thesis, so this is a little bit different here. Uh, but it's important that you have a strong thesis in place. And we're going to look at some examples in just a second. Um, and the final prompt asks you to think about research. Okay. Uh, research is actually next week, but we want you to already be thinking about ideas. In general, the three things that you identify are probably going to be the things that you research. So if the ad is making interesting use of color, you might research color theory. Um, or if an ad is playing with sexual imagery, you might look at sexuality in an advertising. Uh, but let's talk about these statements, okay? Because we talked about, I'm gonna skip through some slides because I'm actually taking a little bit longer than I thought I would. And I do wanna talk about the McGraw-Hill stuff because there's sometimes some confusion about that. So I wanna kind of walk you through exactly what you need to do. Um, so yeah, let's talk about thesis statements. A thesis statement can be simplified in terms of Hold on a second, my cursor disappeared again. A thesis statement is basically your general topic plus point of significance. Uh, but let's look at some examples because that probably doesn't make much sense. Here are two examples of thesis statements based on two of the ads we looked at, the Jeep ad and the Diet Coke ad. I've color coded things so you can see things in separate parts. Whatever is colored green 
are the three cool things that you notice, the three elements, the three aspects of the ad that you're going to ultimately talk about more in depth. So here's the thesis for the Jeep ad. Through the ads, excuse me, through the use of simple color, playful imagery, and a double meaning tagline that reinforces theme, the see whatever you want to see ad appeals to the inner adventure inside everyone to unlock a hidden enthusiasm for Jeep. Okay, so green, that's our three points. Okay, so we know that the essay eventually is going to talk about the ad in terms of color, imagery, and its tagline. In purple or pink, I've literally highlighted the name or the title of the ad. And then what's in yellow is sort of like your larger points. Okay. Um, and the second one is based on the Diet Coke ad. The Diet Coke Tall, Dark, and Handsome ad targets sophisticated consumers. You can make the argument that it's really maybe perhaps targeting women with that title, Tall, Dark, and Handsome, uh, through seductive music, slow camera movement, and sexually charged language to make the emotional appeal associating the product with heteronormative romance. That's just a fancy word for yeah, if, if, you, if you're confused by heteronormative, which refers to straight people, you could just say, basically, we're making the larger point that the ad uses these techniques in order to associate the product with romance. Okay, the music, the slow camera movement, uh, the name of the ad, okay, the language um, reinforces. Yeah, it's playing almost comically with the idea of romance. Uh, one person says that they're no longer hearing me. Are other people still hearing me? Yes. Okay. Let me type something real quickly. I have to leave and re-enter if you are having audio problems. Okay. Um, so this is what you're going to have to do with whatever ad you choose. Um, and you have these two examples on your worksheet, so you can look at the examples. Okay. But essentially, you're going to name the name of the ad somewhere in your thesis. You're going to list your three points, those three cool things you're going to talk about. And yeah, you should have kind of a larger point of significance. Okay. So the PlayStation ad uses A, B, and C in order to blank. The Allstate ad uses X, Y, and Z in order to, okay. But again, you have these examples on your worksheet, but it's pretty important because once you have these things in place, then the paper is a snap. So it's important that you have a clear and strong thesis because then, yeah, it's just a matter of creating an introduction, having three separate body paragraphs that focus on your three separate issues. So again, in the Jeep essay that we, I briefly showed, I had one paragraph about the ads use of color, one ad about, well, excuse me, one paragraph about the ads imagery and one about its tagline. Okay. So yeah, if you can have that in place and part of my job is to give you feedback on your worksheet to make sure it's headed in the right direction. Um, but if it is, you'll be in pretty good shape because then you'll see when we move to the outline, um, you'll just have to fill in the specific details for each of those separate paragraphs in your essay. Let me talk real quickly about the McGraw-Hill stuff, okay? And then I'm gonna let you go. 